Alright, 5.1, graphs of reciprocal functions. We're going to look at graphs of reciprocal functions by the use of an example first. And then I'm going to go through the general ideas behind um, how to graph a reciprocal function. So looking at an example, let's say I gave you a parabola, 9 minus x squared. And I ask you to determine the domain, range, and uh, intercepts, positive, negative intervals, and increasing and decreasing intervals for this particular function. Once we do that, we're going to use the answers from part A to sketch the graph of the reciprocal function of f. So basically, we're trying to graph this particular function down here. In grade 11, you learned about a reciprocal function that was linear. In this case, we're going to learn how to draw any reciprocal function, uh, whether it be a linear reciprocal or a parabola that's taken the reciprocal of. So let's look at the first, let's look at part A and answer the questions for part A. So the next thing we're going to look at is we're just going to rewrite the question over here so we can talk about the different concepts. The first thing we want to do is the domain. What is the domain? So. The domain of the uh, parabola, of any parabola, is x belongs to real. The range is going to be y belongs to real, such that, now note the parabola up here looking at the actual equation, we see that it's 9 minus x squared. What that means is we need to determine the, the vertex. The vertex for this, if you look very carefully, is going to be, if I rewrite it, I'm just going to rewrite just the 9 minus x squared to be negative x squared plus 9. Hopefully, you see that the vertex is going to be 0, 9. And it's going to be 0, 9, and it opens down. So what we can do is now use that 9 and note that it opens down by saying y is less than or equal to 9. Next part, you're asked, so that's the domain and the range. Next we're asked is for the, ask for the intercepts. So the x-intercepts are when does this function equal 0? Well, that would be when it's negative 3 and positive 3. Hopefully you spend some time thinking about that. If you want to, just think about it in terms of factoring a difference of squares and you should get those values. Alright, the y-intercept is going to be 0, 9. Funny enough, our y-intercept turns out to be also our vertex. Next thing we're going to look at is the, in, the positive and negative intervals. All right. So using from what we learned in the last unit, we're going to use a table to prove the intervals. So from negative infinity to negative 3, from negative 3 to 3, and from 3 to infinity. Again, how do we get those? We use the zeros and we calculate what um, values, whether the function will be of above or below the x-axis. The turning points we need, and then we also need the factored form of that equation. So we have negative, and then x minus 3, and then x plus 3. What those are, if you think about it, is has to do with this, is the factored form of this. We're using the factored form and certain test points. Test points for this interval is going to be negative 5, and this interval is 0, and in this interval is 5. Now notice there's a negative. That means the, we have to include that negative as part of our problem because it does change the sign of the function. X, so negative 5 minus 3 gives us a negative, all right, and negative 5 plus 3 gives us a negative. And that means three negatives will result in a function that is less than zero. The next part we have is plugging in the zero. So we have a negative, a negative, and a negative. And then next, okay, a negative, negative, sorry, and the last one is a positive. All right, and what we have here is that Again, don't forget there's a negative here, a negative here, and then a positive, which results in a values that are above zero, so positive values. Finally, the last one, we have a negative, a positive, and a positive, and that results in a value that is 
negative. So all the values in this interval will be have negative y values. So we now have all the, inc uh, the positive and negative intervals. Last but not least, we need to determine the increasing and decreasing intervals. That means where is the function increasing and where is the function decreasing. So we're going to look at a sketch of this really quickly. And looking at the sketch using that vertex that you have here, 0, 9 was the vertex, and then negative 3 and positive 3 were the zeros. So the zeros, in particular, help us with determining which values are positive and which values are negative. The vertex for the parabola helps to tell us where the turning point is. And that turning point will then uh, give us the area where there's increasing and decreasing. So the increasing intervals happen from negative infinity up to zero. So from here to here, so the function is increasing. You get to this value, which is at x equals zero, the function then starts to decrease. So it's decreasing from zero to infinity. All right, so we've talked about all the different pieces that are in part A, and we're going to use these pieces from part A to answer part B. So we're going to go through this step by step. We're going to use the answers in part A to sketch the graph of the reciprocal function. So let's move on to the next part. So for the reciprocal function, the reciprocal function is that equation. Now, when you take a reciprocal function, the, the denominator here will have some restrictions. If you remember from grade 11, restrictions, what they create is an area where the function does not exist. Well, th those restrictions turn into something called the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote turns out to be at the same values and where the function was originally zero. So the original function was zero and here are the zeros. The horizontal asymptote and is y equals zero. Why? Because if you look at this function, the numerator can never, ever, ever have a value of zero. So therefore, there will be a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So again, the vertical asymptote is always at the zero, at the original zeros, all right, and the horizontal asymptote is reciprocal of a line or a quadratic will always have this particular value, okay? This particular horizontal asymptote. Let's look at the next part. So that's a reciprocal function. We now have a vertical asymptote. We have a horizontal asymptote. Actually, we have two vertical asymptotes. The domain of a reciprocal function is going to be restricted by this vertical asymptote. So the function will go from Alright, so if we look, think about it, it goes from, it cannot include positive or negative 3. It'll go from negative infinity up to negative 3, negative 3 to 3, and then 3 to infinity. So basically, it does not include these vertical asymptotes. So the vertical asymptotes affect our domain. The next thing we're going to look at is the range. What is the range on a function of the reciprocal function? Well, Remember that the range had, has a horizontal asymptote that affects it. So we're going to have two values, one of them being less than zero, and the other part being above zero. But where exactly is it above zero? There's got to be some point where it reaches, and there is. That point is uh, one-ninth. Why is it one-ninth, you may be wondering? Well, we're going to talk about that in just a second. But what's important to note is the number here, that 9. Where did we see a 9 before? Well, the horizontal asymptote comes from, okay, this part right here that affects our range, but this part right here comes from our, if you remember correctly, that's right, I hope you're thinking, from the vertex. And it's also the y-intercept. Okay, lucky for us it was the y-intercept, but it's not always going to be the y-intercept. What's more important is that to note that that was your minimum value that we took the reciprocal of. So basically, if we think about it, it's not the y-intercept or the minimum, but it's actually the vertex that's going to be important 
to determine the range of a reciprocal function. So it's the reciprocal of the minimum value, the original maximum, which turned into a minimum. So the y-intercept for this function is going to be the reciprocal of the y-intercept that was originally given. That turns out to be the vertex that we found the reciprocal of. And it's our local minimum. Now, why is it a local minimum? Why is it a minimum all of a sudden? In the original function, if we go back, let's just go back to this for a minute. Let's just go back to it for a minute, to the previous page. If we look at it, we said that the y-intercept was 0, 9 right here. All right, and that y-intercept being 0, 9, it was this function right here. It was a maximum. When you take the reciprocal, you're flipping this. So essentially, it's almost like flipping this section of the graph, okay? And we're going to flip it. Well, when we flip that, this 9 becomes 1 over 9. So it'll be a, very, a number very, very close to that horizontal asymptote. So let's go back to the other page. So, oop, that's too much writing for you guys. Just a minute. Let me get you there. So here we were. So let's keep going. The y-intercept is 0, 1, 9, which is also our local minimum. This was a max in the original function. We take the reciprocal of it in part A. The x-intercepts, well, you have to think about it. It's not going to cross that y equals 0 graph. But we do know that this function has an in increasing interval when x goes from negative 3 to 3, and it has a decreasing interval when it goes from negative infinity to negative 3 and 3 to infinity. What does that mean? Okay, so this is not decreasing and increasing, but I want you to look at this in terms of intercepts. These are the... Um, uh, where it's positive and where it's negative. Think back to our last function. Are these the same values that we looked at in the last function? All right, what we're going to do is we're going to stop the video and we're going to go on to video number two so we can continue this idea. So we're going to take a step back and we're going to continue this idea and what this means. So looking forward to seeing you in video two.